In this video, I will try to explain the one one rule which applies to drones that are limited to flying the A2 airspace. Flying in the A2 airspace will not allow you to fly over people, but it will allow you to fly close to them. A good example of this is the newly released DJI Mavic 3 Pro. That is classified as a C2 drone and thereby needs to fly in the A2 airspace. It can of course fly in the A3, but that is with a horizontal distance of 150 meter to urban areas. I'll be surprised if this is the plan if you buy a drone like that. I don't know if the 1-1 rule applies all over the world, but at least if you fly in EU under the EASA EU drone regulations, this is something you need to pay attention to. So let's jump into the EASA website and scroll down to the section that describes the requirements for the C2 drones. And don't worry about this part that it says how to operate drones in the open category from the 1st of 1st, 2024. If you purchase a drone with a class identification label, you can already take advantage of this right now. So let's unfold the tab here with the C2. So as you can see, a C2 class identification label will put your drone in the A2 airspace. So what does it mean that you are allowed to fly close to people? First of all, no overflying of uninvolved people. Uninvolved people are people that are present when you're doing your recordings that is not a direct part of your drone operation. Second, you need to keep a horizontal distance of 30 meters to uninvolved people. You can reduce this distance to five meters if you enable a low speed mode on the drone. And if you use the Mavic 3 Pro as an example, that would be the cine mode. As a side remark, of course you need to be registered as a drone operator and you need a remote pilot certificate of competence for the A2 open category to be able to fly a C2 classified drone in urban areas. And as a baseline, you need to be 16 years or older. Each of the EU membership states can decide to lower the minimum age from 16 to 12. If they decide to do so, this will only be valid in the country that have decided to do so. Jumping back to the operational restrictions, they are not described very well in this table. So to fully understand what this means, we need to jump to another sub page of the EASA website that is called flying drones close to people. Just doing a fast search here for one one. And there's a section that is called flying over people with different categories of drones. And if we jump down here to the A2 airspace, then there's this section that requires our attention. And you will be surprised how many interpretations there are on this specific section. So I've decided to make a few slides to make it a little bit easier to understand. To keep everything super simple, the drone is in normal mode. We have a flat ground and on the ground we have placed a person that is not directly involved in the drone operation, meaning that he's an uninvolved person. Next, we need a drone, and in this case it's a C2 classified drone, which means that it needs to fly in the A2 airspace. We have a 120 meter limit, which is the maximum height that we are allowed to fly. With that information, we now know that we need to establish a safety zone of 30 meters around an uninvolved person. So let's establish the safety zone and put the drone nicely outside the zone. So let's say that drone takes off and stays in 10 meters attitude. If that is the case, you still need to keep a minimum of 30 meters to the uninvolved person. So if I increase the attitude to 30 meters, you still need to maintain a minimum of 30 meters to the uninvolved person meaning that the airspace will be blocked in between up to the maximum height of 120 meters. So if I now increase the attitude to 40 meters, now the 1-1 rule comes into play because that automatically increases the minimum distance equal to the height, hence the 1-1 rule name. And that relationship continues up to the maximum height of 120 meters. If we need to colorize this a little bit to give you an understanding of where the drone is allowed and where it's not allowed, I've put on some nice colors here and you can see the green area indicates where you're allowed to fly with your drone and the red is where you are not allowed to be with your drone. So what happens when we enable the low speed mode that will decrease the safety distance from 30 to five meters? This is in principle the same, just that the safety radius around the person has been shrunken from the 30 to the 12. And because we are applying the one one rule, the height is equally reduced to five meters. So if we use the same color scheme as before, 
The green area indicates where the drone is allowed to fly when it's operated in low speed mode. And of course, both the 5 and 30 meter minimum safety radius applies 360 degrees around the uninvolved person. So of course, uh, this rule is manageable, but it is a hell of a lot more difficult to fly with a C2 classified drone in urban areas than it is with a C1. But at least I hope this video provided some clarity of what it means when somebody is talking about the 1-1 one -one rule. Oh, by the way, I spent the best part of uh, last week redesigning the Tech Drone Media website. And hopefully it will be more clear to at least people that don't know me in advance what it is that I'm offering to the interweb. In case you are curious what I have been up to, I will of course make sure to leave a link in the description below so you can go check it out. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around.